Okay, now who wants to learn more about sales? Yes, why not? Now tonight we have our panel, we have Wendy Berry from Top Gun Sales Academy and what's the new name of the business? Oh, Wendy Berry Training. Wendy Berry Training. We have Tina Robertson Christie from Ascends Australia who's behind the Nationwide Networking website. We have Vesna Grubasevic from QT. Now we'll start with you Wendy, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Am I on? Yep, oh, you're, yes. you're on. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, Wendy. She used to be my sales coach. This is the one that I was telling you I was slightly scared of, but loved at the same time. <laughs> so tell us a bit about your background. Um, anybody heard of Top Gun Business Academy? Yes? Wayne Berry? Yes. Wendy Berry? Yes? <laughs> you really want to in the crowd. We established Top Gun Business Academy about 17 years ago. Um, something for Australians, by Australians, using the information we had from, Wayne used to bring out all the American speakers during the 80s, 67 hours a year for 10 years. Anybody know any of those? Mm -hmm. So we used that information, my experience at Yellow Pages, 10 years at Yellow Pages and the, um, all the courses and everything that I did, we put something together and since then we've, um, our purpose is to help people be the best they can be in sales by giving them the motivation and the skill, training uh, people from individuals to large corporates. So people like, who have I done recently? Ted's Camera Stores. Have you heard of Ted's Camera Stores? I deal with them, I tell you people nationally. I, I select, who have I select on the radio? Dealt with them for 18 months. Micropay, anybody know Micropay? Yeah, Sage? Yeah, people like that. Um, Alloy, it's Busy Board. Who else have I done for Alpen Products. Lots and lots of people. So um, all sorts of industries across the board. And, uh, and I just love it and I love being here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. Tina, pass over to Tina, tell us a little bit about your background because you've worked on some major projects as well. Indeed. All right. Is this on? Yeah. Okay, great. All right. The company that um, I represent is Ascends Australia. It's one of a group of companies. Um, we're international in Sri Lanka of all places and just opening up Mexico and in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, and also in New Zealand, I can't forget that, can I? <laughs> so what we do is we specialise in online direct marketing and um, we and pretty much the broad gamut of marketing services. Uh, we do quite a lot of strategic consulting as well. So where did I start off? I've been in, in IT for about 10 years, probably more now. <laughs> you, you're not a nerd by any means. And uh, we worked on some major projects indeed. We've worked with AT&T, Time Warner Cable, Citigroup, all those lovely big names that I can, I can drop in. Uh, and you've worked on a lot of the Rings campaign, which will tell us a bit about that later too. I'll talk a little bit about that, yes. Um, so we've done some very exciting creative projects, uh, some very technical projects, a lot of government department projects, and a lot of small and medium-sized business projects. So. We've done the, done the whole gamut, helping people getting started online, understanding how best to use that medium and how to, how to work it to get sales. Yep. Fantastic. Vesna, tell us a bit about your background. What's QT? Thank you, ben. QT stands for Quantum Transformations, and that's what my business is all about. Um, my name is Vesna, as you know. My role with QT is a performance transformation expert. I've been with QT, my own business, for seven years now. Prior to that, I was in the corporate environment. I was an economist with my crystal ball for about nine years. <laughs> what are you predicting right now? <laughs> um, and, prior, and after that, I was in corporate strategy, including working on major projects, cultural change programs with McKinsey and Co. for the National Australian Bank's corporate-wide uh, mm -hmm. cultural change programs. So I was involved with that. And prior to my banking career, I was in the hospitality industry for six years, which is brilliant training ground for anyone wanting to master selling. Um, what I focus on now is working with professionals and business owners to help them improve their selling, uh, especially their conversion. And the biggest thing that gets in the way is fear. And we'll talk about fear later today. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Big round of applause for our panelists. <laughs> okay. Wendy, we're going to start with you. Now, we've got a lot of people in the room that hate selling. What would you say to somebody that hated selling but has to do it? Um, either get out of what you're doing or learn how to do it. Because 
we have without sales we have no business. Yeah? So we all have to sell, particularly if we're in business for ourselves. Um, if you have a fear of selling, why? Let's start off. Why do you think we have a fear of selling? Well, how, how many of you here? Why? Fear of rejection. Fear of rejection. Yeah. What else? Confrontation makes us uncomfortable. Confrontation. Yeah. What else? Confidence. Hmm? Confidence. Confidence in what? In yourself. In yourself. Confidence in product. Confidence in the product that you're selling, product knowledge, product needs, you know. So, sorry? I feel guilty. Feel guilty selling? Yeah? Embarrassed selling? Embarrassment? Yes. Yes? You feel pushy. You feel pushy, yeah. So, what's the, the biggest thing that prevents you being able to sell? It's yourself. Alright? Um, how many of you in the room, like myself, can't swim? Reasons that I never learned to swim or I don't swim. Yeah, why? Where you grew up here. Sorry? Where you grew up. Where I grew up. My, 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 and this is a metaphor for selling. So the, the situation that you're in compared to the situation that you perhaps could be in where I grew up, so where you are now compared to where you perhaps could be with selling. Why else wouldn't I have learned to, to swim? Didn't want, I didn't have enough reasons to want to swim. Or there was nothing saying, no, no, nothing compelling me to want to do it. Same as in sales, there wasn't enough wanting, you haven't got enough good reasons. Sorry? A, a bad experience with with swimming before, and that was absolutely true. My cousin held me up, held me upside down in the waves and talked to him. I was too scared. I had a bad experience. Same with selling. Why else wouldn't I learn to swim? Motivation to learn it. Yes, I sorry? Motivation to learn it. Motivation to learn it and no one to teach me properly. properly. So I might I jump in the pool now and I watch what other people do and you now I get the kickboard out and I push along and that might get me there copying what other people do, but sometimes not doing something is because you don't know how to do it and you haven't had a teacher. Now if I really wanted to learn how to swim, how many of you can swim? How did you get to learn to swim? Jumped in the deep end? Yeah? Someone taught you? Sorry? Practice. Practice, practice, practice. Three ways. Practice. Learning from somebody else that could swim who taught you the strokes, um, taught you the technique, taught you not to fear it. And so that if you are scared of selling, there are all for all those same reasons that you can learn how to sell. And it's overcoming the barriers that we place on ourselves, our emotional barriers, our psychological barriers, the way our paradigms of our world, the, the way that we see selling. Um, it's also getting someone that knows how to sell that makes it easy. If someone says, you know, you just do this with your arm and you do this, you know, over whatever they do, um, and you say, I can do that. These are the words to say. These are the order I say them. This is the reasons why I say them. This is the effect it has. Go out and practice it. See what effect it has and see what results you get. And you, you, it's working in an upward spiral so that if you change what's going on in your head, your attitude, it changes your perception of the potential of the marketplace, of your world, of yourself. That changes the actions that you take. If you change the actions that you take, then what changes if you change your actions? You get up earlier or later if you're motivated. Yeah. Earlier. So the res and so the results that you get in the day from all the things, the yeah, different actions you take will be better. And that will go back to say, yeah, and it becomes an upward spiral. And quite often I see sales reps sitting around coffee shops, water coolers, having depression sessions, and they're saying, oh, you know, it's my boss. He really doesn't give me a proper go on the territory they've given me, and like it's the government. And it's this recession that's going to happen, and... It's this and this and this. There's always a reason, isn't there? There's always a reason, a justification. And these people, these are the people that get up late. They have longer or shorter lunches. Longer lunches. Make less or more prospecting calls. Less prospecting calls. And the results. So their actions are worse. The results are less. And I say, yes, see, I was right. It is bad out there. Confirms the, their attitude and the perception of the potential. They're on a downward spiral. So you tap into that by doing something different, by taking actions, by finding somebody or something that knows how to do it. And they can say, these are the steps you need to take. Because uh, with a lot of business owners. Sure. <laughs> how much caffeine have you had, love? <laughs> <laughs> take a drink. <laughs> well, that's the presentation done. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> So how, how long does it take for someone to get these skills? Because a lot of people start out in business getting sales skills or even thinking about actually employing someone to educate you on sales is probably one of the last things on their mind. 
how long does it take yeah. to get the skills. It's up to the individuals for how much work they want to put in. So that it's a matter of, and the best the way that I learned is I took a, a technique at a time and practiced it until it became a habit. You know, you move from being unconsciously incompetent, you don't, you're bad, you don't know it, someone points it out to you, then you become consciously competent, then uh, consciously incompetent, then you move to conscious competence once you you know, they're doing the right thing and then you become unconsciously competent and you move around the cycle. So the quicker that you um, recognise it, get some help and do something about it. And if you do something every day, like um, if you say, all right, I really need to get out there and get some more business in, I think I'll do three prospecting calls this week compared to the person who's sitting on the other side of your marketplace and says, right, I'm going to make 100 prospecting calls this week and they get on the phone. So it's really about the activity and practicing the skills and doing the activity. And that, and the more you do, the better you get, obviously, if you're doing the right thing. So how does the new sales model compare to, say, the sales model about 10, 15, 20 years ago? Um, our buyers these days are more aware or less aware. More, more aware. aware. And they expect more from the person selling to them or less. More. They expect more. So it's all about... The old model of sales was, and you might have experienced this buying, for example, a used car, um, where you're walking into the car yard and the car salesman spots you from the other side and it's like slow motion and he runs towards you. <laughs> no. With, with, with pop rolling around in his eyes. Dollars. Dollars rolling around in his eyes. Because they thought in the old model of sales, they, they said, um, you, you relate to them, hi, how are you going? You qualify, have you got the money, are you going to buy today? And then it's the, it's the presentation. They tell you everything whether you need to know it or not. You know when you buy insurance? And they get the manual out and they start telling you everything, 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 and you make a mistake by interrupting them and then asking a question and they punish you by starting again. <laughs> <laughs> so the old model of sales are tended to be product peddlers, people that needed to tell you everything, order takers and quote givers. And still 80% of today, people are still like that. And then it was 40% of the process was, and people were taught always be closing. The ABC of sales, anybody learned to sell that way? Always be closing. These days we turn that model upside down where we spend 70% of the time in the sales process focusing on the customer. 40% of time developing the relationships, building trust, building rapport, 30% um, of the time determining what their needs are. So they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, the old thing. So asking lots of questions, talking about them. So when you make your presentation it's exactly on what they need followed by just a confirmation. So it's completely the other way around. Because, I mean, if you're ultimately, if you're worried about sales and the fear of rejection and everything else, are you really focusing on what the customer needs at the end of the day? Who are you focusing on? Yeah. Yourself. Because it's not about you, it's about them. Okay. So, yeah, what does the new sales process look like? Map it out for me. We get, say, a consumer walks in our front door or an inquiry comes through the website. We ring them up. What do we do? Okay, so the purpose, uh, when someone's calling, um, it's more important, unless you're skilled at selling over the telephone, to just sell the appointment. Yeah. So um, it's giving them, it's, it's, it's working on performance standards, so smile before you pick up the phone. Are we going to talk phone or face to face here again? We'll do phone first. Okay, fine. <laughs> so, smile before you pick up the phone, use the correct greeting, which is... Um, good morning, Top Gun Business Academy, this is Wendy Berry. You never ever say speaking. Um, you get their name if they haven't given it to you, you write it down, you give them your name. They remember the last thing they hear when they pick up the phone, that's why you say your name last. Um, and then you ask them questions. So, but with the purpose of getting the appointment. So that um, there's a whole process that you need to go through, which I won't go through now, um, so that um, you can give them the opportunity of seeing what is available um, more fully. So it's more the initial phone call is the education process, what we have to offer, get in here, we'll have a meeting. Give we'll them a good reason to come into the store, give them a good reason for an appointment. Unless you're skilled at selling over the phone. Yep. If you're skilled at selling over the phone then you can go straight into the question asking process. And questions are there designed to, for three reasons, to build rapport, to determine what their needs are, and more importantly, or just as importantly, is to disturb them about their current situation enough so that they feel that you really understand them and that they want to make a change to what you potentially are offering if it suits what their needs are. So talk to us about the disturbing, because it's 
And it's a key element that a lot of business owners don't do, but need to do ultimately to help their client. Okay, so disturbing process. I just want everybody in the room to answer rhetorically. So in your head, just think of the answer. So um, what would you say is the greatest challenge you face in your business or in your sales career if you're in sales right now? Um, why do you think that's a challenge? Can you tell me, can you think of a specific example of what you mean about that being a concern or a challenge for you? How do you mean? I want you to elaborate on what you're talking about in that specific example. Gee, really? How much do you think that would be costing you right now, having that challenge? Mm. If, um, so what are the consequences to you if that challenge continues the way it is, ongoing? And how's that going to make you feel? Okay, well if I could think of something that might help you with that, help you overcome the challenge and deal with that, was there something perhaps you, we could talk about or you'd like to hear about? Now how did you all feel in the room? Bad? I'm scared. Scared? Stressed? Okay. Does anyone want to cry then? <laughs> Alright, so the purpose of a salesperson with the proper questions and fully understanding and getting the person to think about because you're not just there to flog on what you've got to sell and what you're there for is to understand who they are, what their challenges are, what their concerns are and to say, yes, now I understand you, fully explained, you've given me an example, I know how much it's costing you and I think I have a solution for you. And are you going to want to hear about it? Yeah, of course you are. Rather than just, you know, saying, um, I have the best sales training ever in the whole world, I'd say, now tell me about your sales experience. Tell me what's been happening. Tell me specifically what's been happening. Oh, give, can I give a little example? Yeah. This is a really good one. It's a really scary one. Um, um, someone told Rafi Jaminda about me. Who's, do you, anybody know who Rafi Jaminda is? He's Richard Pratt's son-in-law. So he runs a $13 billion business called Busy Board. And his PA rang me and said, Rafi wants to see you. And I said, hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm the best dress. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I walked into his office at the Como Centre and he said, Wendy, sit, tell me about Top Gun. And being a smidgen nervous, my natural reaction would have been to go, blah, 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 Top Gun, we do this and it's fabulous, we do this and this and this and we train people and all that. And I said, hang on, Ruffy, do you mind if I just ask you a couple of questions regarding busy board sales um, so I can better understand what's happening and then perhaps I can tell you what will be most relevant to you. He went, oh. I said, so... Tell me what the greatest challenge is in your sales team right now. Tell me specifically what's happening out there. Can you think of an example that you know, you've been told about? Why do you think this is happening? How do you mean? Gee, what's that costing busy board? And what are the consequences if this continues? And I did it. And anyway, the conversation went on and on and on. And um, the next day, his national sales manager rang me and said, Rubber, we've got to deal with you. <laughs> So, so it's, it's taking things um, counter-instinctively, I suppose, because we naturally are excited about what we do in our products and our services, and we want everybody to know. Or if someone comes to us, we say, yes, I can do a good deal on that. Or um, if you want to buy it, I'll sell it to you. But maybe, how many of you bought the wrong thing? 